Hey everyone. So now I have Anne Marie Sunday with Legacy Property Management on, and it's been I think three months, Anne Marie. So we're gonna go back and kind of catch up on some, uh, you know, how rental payments have or not been the last couple months. We're just coming out of this crazy freeze we had mid February. We'll talk about some updates on there, and plus you're very active on the legislature front, legislative front as well. So we'll get some updates on that. But let's start off with just how your portfolio and how your you know investors portfolio has been performing the last two or three months. And you are predominantly like detached single family homes and you've had some amazing rent collections, but that was three months ago. You still hundred percent. Still hundred percent. Wow. I got great tenants. Um, we're, we are kind of deciding maybe not to take the, the lower condos. I, I don't want to say they're lower end, but lower price points. Um, just so that I don't have to deal with um, some of the new legislation that's been put into place now. But um, yeah, we are still 100%, <clears throat> excuse me, 100% and tenants are cooperating, communicating. There's plenty of money and plenty of resources for these tenants. So there's really no reason um, for their not, them not to cooperate uh, in getting their rents in. And I remember, I mean, so... I think with a lot of the tents, you have a lot of them are, are, are good positions where they can just work remotely for their job. Right. And beyond that, have you had many that had to use like the the POP program or these other programs help help uh, pay for rent or back rent? I only had one um, that that uh, utilized POP and actually the owner applied for the POP and the tenant cooperated. You know, it's a shame because we lead them to these sources. This literally is a source where the government has money that will give them rent and they think we're lying. I, even the attorneys will say, they, like we are in an eviction, here's a place where you can get money free and it won't go on your record. And they just think, no, that can't be true. So oh, wow. Um, yeah, so um, it's unfortunate that the POP program while there uh, there is potential legislation to make it quote unquote better because there was an approval of additional funded money and at Thanksgiving for tenants that are struggling. Um, but right now, if an owner applies for the POP program, the tenants have to sign off. They have to agree to that. They have to do a CDC affidavit. And that's where the tenants think that there's a game, there's a catch. And so some, the one owner that did it, she waited six months for her money, which is ridiculous. So I've reported that into the legislative body uh, on Capitol Hill. And so I have seen some drafts of it getting modified or changed, reworked. So it's not like that. All right. And I want to ask you more questions out in a minute, but uh, kind of circling back around. So obviously you have strong rent collection. Only yeah. one tenant had to utilize the uh, rent assistance, which is great yeah. just in general just as far as like uh leasing activity uh upping rents what's kind of just the feel you're you're having across your portfolio now the last couple months and moving into you know moving into uh early busy march time. yeah it's getting into busy time for sure yeah. we have not stopped leasing we just had a phenomenal lease month for february again um, still single family homes are what are in demand. People are still moving here. People are still moving despite COVID. So we can't keep a house on the market for more than 30 days. They, they go up and they're leased within, within 30 and some of them are moved in within that 45 day. It's amazing to me. Um, the condos still sit every bit of 90 days. There's not a, there is not a demand for a condo. It's not a good investment in my opinion. Um, just what part of town are these condos sitting for 90 days? Um, is that like down in Highlands Ranch, Parker, or in Denver? No, we had a downtown condo that's been on um, for 90. Okay, uh, downtown. Uh huh. We also have several in Centennial, High, not really Highlands Ranch. We don't have any condos in Highlands Ranch, but yeah, I mean, there's suburbia definitely sit. It's you might have a little bit higher chance of renting in downtown, but during COVID, downtown was shut shut down, mm -hmm. so nobody was renting out there either. But it's just a struggle. That's not what's moving into Denver. It's families. Yeah, I'm sure because I mean, definitely, like you know, we we you know, myself, all of our investors, and a lot of stuff in like Aurora, more of the you know, the Class C, Class B stuff, and those. Fortunately for us, we're not seeing those longer turnaround times. 
but I think that's kind of the, you know, uh, just that different market. I'm surprised for that long in other parts of town. Yeah, you, you also run into uh, HUD is very aggressive in Aurora, so they are subsidizing housing much more aggressively in Aurora, especially. So um, if you're not subsidized housing approved, you could very likely get subsidized housing approved or get on their list. Um, so there's more susceptibility there. Um, yeah, it, it's been a great, it's been still, we are very active in leasing. We are still bringing on properties, houses. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing to me how many um, owners and the more owners learn, uh, you know, about what the legislation is or what they don't or do want to get involved with, with their rentals, um, we get calls for that. So, you know, Okay. And yeah. something you had mentioned right before we, we hit record on here, Amory, was that, uh, you know, we're, we're recording this on Tuesday after we had that like crazy cold front that came through and the, it dropped in the negatives. And you said you had five houses with, per, uh, with uh, frozen, frozen pipes. pipes. Yeah. So what happened and how can, you know, other investors hopefully help avoid that? Um, so I sent a whole new protocol to all my tenants uh, over the weekend, actually yesterday. Um, so the, the plumbers are running around like chickens with their heads, heads cut off, probably the same as the HVAC guys are. Thankfully, I have no heat, heat out, but I do have, I have had two houses without hot water and three houses with frozen pipes. And it's just this long duration of frigid temperatures that froze them. Now, a couple of my tenants did all the right things and we, there was nothing we could do, but they opened up their cabinet doors on, for the sinks to get heat in there. Some of them had blow dryers going, I mean, just to keep, but the big thing is we tell them, you know, let it drip, like turn the water on and let it drip, sleep with it like that. When it's this cold, any external pipes um, on the external walls are susceptible to freezing. And the plumber said, I'm not surprised. The big thing now is when it defrosts, hopefully we don't have a cracked pipe, which one we just got the call, it, it was cracked. So. Oh no. So we do have remediation headed to that house right now. But, you know, these are not, you know, these are houses in brand new Saddle Rock over in Littleton. I mean, it's not, it, it can happen to any of us, but um, doing some proactive things, we, we warned our tenants, crank your heat up, don't be cheap. Get, <laughs> keep some movement in the house. And any of our vacant properties we that are being shown right now, we have a whole protocol for that as well pretty much turn the water off and, and let it bleed out, but. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. good luck with getting all that cleaned up and hopefully yeah. nothing too bad for your investors and your tenants. Yeah. Um, now the legislation, I know, you know, we were emailing back and uh, you're emailing me a lot of updates a few weeks ago. Yeah. You are very active. Um, kind of tell us what you're up to and some legislation. We got a few minutes left. Can I give us a rundown and the plan sure. is just to do a more in-depth talk about this uh, in the near future. Sure. So I am now accepted a position, unpaid volunteer, as the Colorado, uh, it's the, the uh, coalition is the Colorado Landlord Legislative Coalition. We like to say CLLC because that whole other part is a, is a mouthful, but you can Google it. There is a website. I am the lobbyist liaison. They do have a lobbyist. This is not just for property managers. I would encourage anyone that is self-managing to be part of this coalition. This is where your voice gets to be heard uh, on Capitol Hill. So legislative uh, legislation took one month reprieve. So they were supposed to start in January. They actually started today. Uh, bills, I am seeing bills in their draft form, so I can't talk about specifics, but I've been on probably 25 draft bill Zoom calls with the legislators as a representative for the property management or managing owner of single family homes. There isn't another group in Denver Metro. There's the apartment association. They, they obviously have represent apartments. There's the mobile home, but there's never been a single family. So we're super excited about it because now we have a voice. I spent too much time feeling like there, we weren't getting anywhere when we were testifying two years ago in front of the Senate and the House. And we're making a difference because now we're at the stakeholder meetings with the, with the bill drafts. 
Um, so what does that mean exactly? Like while while the legislators are like drafting up the bill, you guys are there to able to, to comment and also just say, hey, like when I was saying, hey, this sounds good on paper, but here's the unintended consequences. You know, you're downstream. nice. I don't even, you're nice. I don't even say it sounds good on paper because it never does. OK, <laughs> but but I will tell you that these people, these legislators have a very set set of constituents. And my, my representation to all of us single family homeowners is you can't carte blanche create a bill that is more specific to an unfair apartment housing provider than a single family because you're destroying, you know, many of our single family homeowners, that is their retirement. They're living off of that rent and these legislators are killing us. So um, yes, to answer your question, we get to see it in a draft form before it's issued as a formal bill. Hopefully we can make um, an impact to have them modify or change or negotiate. And then of course, when it goes to bill, then it will be public knowledge. And um, almost, always we almost always we testify either for or against. And, and so I'm gonna tell you these bills are not, they are not, I mean, they're having to do with the eviction moratorium being extended way farther than what the national moratorium is right now. Nationally, they're looking at extending it again. We're talking about late fee caps. We're talking about rent control. I mean, if you want a voice, join the CLLC if you're a single family homeowner. And is the best place to go to the website? Yep. And for literally $60 a year, seriously, you can know what's going on. We update our, our members. It's a very new group, but we do have a full-time lobbyist. Is That's who I work with. So he's on Capitol Hill the entire time. Oh, cool. And what's the website? Is it a... It's Colorado Landlord Legislative Coalition.org. Okay. So go there or Google it and that should pop up too, right? And we'll, we'll put a link in the show notes too, but it sounds like the easiest way is just for me, everything is just Google it and it pops up. Yep. And if they ever want to have a conversation with me about what's going on, they can shoot me a message or an email or something. I'm happy to have a conversation, but I'm, I mean, that is my, really my full-time job until May, until we're out of session. Oh, wow. Well, I know that is a lot of work. So thank you. You're um, welcome. I'm glad I'm going to check that out and hopefully a lot of our listeners do as well. And we'll, we'll kind of as we do the property management updates, keep us up up to date on there as well for awareness and hopefully get more members and voices behind because it sounds like that's a, a much needed voice in the Absolutely. process. Absolutely. We do the call to actions. We need people behind us. To, I mean, the legislators have said you need a group to be heard. And and this is it right here. If you guys have not have been happy with what's coming down, been coming down, now's the time to have your voice. So we do do call to actions, asking you to represent, you know, write it straight into your representative or your senator. We ask that you maybe if you're comfortable testifying, it's all Zoom right now. They're not letting people do live testimony into the Capitol. So yeah, it, it's sure. a lot of work, but um, I own three rentals and I manage 175 doors and it's important to me. So I'm happy to do it. Um, it's an honor. Perfect. Well, Amory, thank you so much. You're welcome.